Uh, we're going to move to Dorothy now. Dorothy Schmidt, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Terry. Um, so I think it's not an easy moment for us all because we lately we were mainly commenting on the deconfliction in the region, um, uh, speaking about the Saudi-Iran normalization, about the Abrahamic Accords, of course, um, prospects of normalization with Syria that had been uh, ushered back into the Arab League. And now we've just been drawn back again, backwards in history to this uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict that we all wanted to forget, or we, it, it seems that we missed something, something very big, because now we see the consequences are sort of spreading within all of these conflicts that we were trying to solve, just like uh, Nabil Fahmi said. I must say, speaking as an, as an EU citizen who's been an observer, a, a rather fascinated observer of the efforts that the EU's done to establish and stabilize the Palestinian Authority, all of these efforts that fell totally into a, the Hamas trap in 2006 after the elections, when the EU decided to turn its back on, on Gaza, and we are now, uh, against, as I said, drawn forcibly into this trap. Um, so the three points I want to make is first that I think we, we're going through a moment of flu that has been described more or less by Nabil Fahmi in the beginning of his speech, um, saying that uh, most regional actors are still struggling with where they should stand and what, how they're going to coalesce or not to find a solution. But my concern is that this moment of flu could freeze into a sort of, again, the West against the rest. And Gaza will be the sort of symbolic point that would catalyze this divide of the West, um, explicitly said the US, the EU and Israel against a very heteroclite sort of uh, group of countries that have stood against uh, what they feel as blatant injustice against the massacre in, in Gaza that have been, are being perpetrated by, by Sahel currently as a sort of revenge operation for this horrendous attack that they've, they've gone through in early October. So my problem is how do we avoid uh, falling into again this uh, narrative that I see emerging against this flu. And the flu is because we work on the backdrop of the collapse of state structures in most of the countries in the region. We've seen that in Syria. Arguably, Lebanon is becoming a sort of face state as well. Uh, war is spreading, non or unresolved conflicts. And we have also this flu between what is a conflict, what's a war that was alluded to by uh, Thierry this morning. And um, I see um, I heard uh, Hassan Salami saying, now you don't declare war these days, we slide into war. So this is, this is the concern we have, is that we're being drawn into war. Everybody's wondering about potential escalation with Lebanon. But the Hezbollah says they don't want to go to war. The Le Lebanon is exhausted, but they might be sort of sliding into war without even realizing it. So uh, this, this emerging uh, rational of the, the West against the rest on Gaza specifically um, goes with this idea that the, the area of conflict is enlarging in the mines. There has been a historical effort to sort of uh, constrain the conflict to Palestine against Israel after the Arab-Israeli conflict. But I think this is totally failing now. Uh, on the contrary, lots of countries now feel uh, concern for the situation there. But the other side, which is also a lot worrying for our own societies, Western societies, is that through migrations and diasporas, we see the divide operating in our own societies now and threatening uh, order and peace in our own societies. And in France, this is particularly uh, clear. So um, who is the rest if we have the West on one side? The rest is you have two very big opportunistic actors, Russia and China, clearly. Russia now turning its back on Israel, but also Israel turning its back on Russia. So this is sort of mutual soft divorce currently. China, who is now expressing interest for the, they have, they have always said that they were in favor, they were in favor of the 
to say solution, I mean, if you, if you go to the sort of very uh, classical consolidated rhetoric of the Chinese, they may have been the last defenders of the two state solutions in the world, maybe. But I see Africa and Asia a lot, as I said, um, now standing against the humanitarian massacre, but also what they feel as a political injustice in, uh, in Gaza. The second point is, uh, in that context, I think, I think three countries are especially interesting to look at. The three countries, to me, I know, of course, Israel, Iran, are, you know, some protagonists that we will have to dwell on to speak about more later. But for me, what's more interesting nowadays is Egypt. Why? Because it was the first Arab countries to make peace with Israel. And now, as Jordan, actually, there's a, a question mark as about how to proceed to enlarge the zone of peace. The second interesting actor, protagonist, is Saudi Arabia, because there is a lot of pressure on them to revive the peace plan. And the idea is that maybe there could be a sort of coming of age of the Saudi diplomacy now. And as Nabil Fahmi said, we need an Arab solution for this. We need an Arab plan anyway. So they may have the symbolic material resource, but do they have the political maturity to do it? And the third country, which I know and I'm following on a daily basis, is Turkey which actually moved from the status of outsider to a primary actor in this conflict also, with uh, Tayyip Erdogan having, uh, pursuing a very consistent pro-Palestinian you know, uh, uh, stance uh, and being extremely vocal against Israel for the last 15 years uh, and proposing to mediate in the beginning and now again escalating rhetorically against Israel. Uh, but my, my concern is that if you think in terms of military escalation, I mean, Erdogan has also said many times that he thought uh, Tsahal was uh, uh, behaving in a very unmoral way and that uh, they should not go too far, etc. And we know Turkey is the one uh, military power that is extremely active in the region currently, and they already had an, a skirmish with Israeli forces in 20. 10, that led to the breakup of relations with Israel. So to conclude, how do we avoid this scenario? And uh, sorry, uh, I'm insisting on these three countries also because they're on both sides. I won't say that they're private countries, but they're friends of the West, but they talk to the rest. They're part of the rest, if you want. Uh, so how do we avoid this scenario of um, an isolated West against an angry global South, as the Americans would frame it? I think it is very clear that we have to take political responsibility for the Palestinians and not economic responsibility. The, the matter has become political again. Uh, and there, of course, Americans are the ones who everybody will turn to to make peace. And I think, again, they are the number one. And, and we see Blinken has a very hard time now traveling to the, to the region and rebalancing from week to week how to operate with every protagonist of the crisis. Uh, the EU that has been rather silent uh, has stood with Israel, but clearly there is this uh, deep historic regret of having failed on the Palestinian uh, solution. But I think the, the country that we have to speak about also is clearly there in terms of responsibility, Israel. Um, because first thing is that I think you have to make peace with the countries you are, or you are at war with. I mean, the Abrahamic Accord are a very interesting device, a diplomatic device, but uh, the countries that are involved are not the ones that have to make real peace with Israel, in fact. They're not primarily concerned with the conflict. And then I think, of course, we have to find a way to make the Israelis look at, 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 the, at the Palestinians as political partners again and not only as a um, sort of a leftover of, a, of the, the grand quest for the consolidation of the uh, Israeli nation state. Uh, so is it wishful thinking? Of course, we will be struggling. We now, we now, now it's time for war, clearly, uh, but it's also time for the humanitarian operations, as had been said all for these three days also. Uh, but working towards the Sustainable solution, I totally agree with Nabil Fahimi that it, now it's time to close this file, otherwise it can escalate. Um, so we have to close it. It means we also have a historical opportunity to take care of this. This requires political patronage, clearly from the US, according to me, and this will not be easy with maybe the next administration. We don't know what the future brings. It needs political will. 
but it also needs economic resources, of course, and this is where the Abraham Accords rationale has, has its place, clearly. Thank you very much, uh, Dorothee. Um, I, you know, you've covered, again, a lot of ground. The, all of the points that are being made here are hugely germane to our, our discussion. Uh, you mentioned Turkey. It's my understanding that President Biden is planning to meet with uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan tomorrow. I believe he's traveling to, to the region. Uh, that, that should be an interesting meeting to keep our eyes on. Uh, the points you were making about the potential, the risks inherent in this conflict, that it has the potential to freeze over into a conflict between, uh, again, this term that's been popping up here, uh, the West against the rest, uh, and you, were, you kindly helped to define what the rest might be, and in, in, uh, where, where we had a bit of an issue on that yesterday. But you also pointed out uh, the risk of this, uh, you know, of countries who in the region sliding into war, uh, thinking particularly about uh, about Hezbollah in, in Lebanon on this, the risk of that. Uh, but you then emphasize the, the importance of, uh, of trying to expand the uh, zone of peace, as you put it, which I think is a nice phrase to describe the, the, some of the surrounding Arab countries that have made peace with Israel and, and potential for doing that forward. So your question about how to get the Israelis and the Palestinians back working on a, on a common political project for their own mutual benefit uh, would indeed be the, the challenge. Thank you very much.